Hello. Hello. Welcome to Jeffrey Travels. I'm Josh. And I'm Jen. I hope all the information on our website really helps you out with planning your trip. If you're watching this through YouTube, then please see the link below to go to our website for further information. The route that we took was New Zealand, Fiji, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Southern Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Northern Thailand, and home. So we left on the 3rd of February and went for almost six months in total. We got almost all of the seasons absolutely right wherever we went, so make sure you check that out before you leave. If we could do one thing again, it would be to leave in January before you go to New Zealand so you can make the most of that amazing summer. So there is some sense in planning your trip before you go, even if you want to be super spontaneous. Therefore, make sure you look at the season before you go because the last thing you want is to be stuck somewhere in their winter and not be able to go outside and enjoy the country. What to pack for your world adventure? Firstly, you need something to put everything in and we would suggest a J-zip bag. So, in girls' terms, that means a bag that opens more like a suitcase rather than a hiking rucksack. Jen had a Carrymore rucksack and I had an Osprey rucksack. Both were brilliant served us really well but if we're honest the Osprey was a little bit more comfortable when you're carrying it around for a long time. Another thing that we were suggest packing that we found very useful were padlocks. You can have a padlock for your big main rucksack, you could also have a padlock for your day backpack. Do not overpack because you will buy heaps of stuff when you're over there, especially in Asia where it's very cheap. For all the OCD people out there, I would suggest taking packing cubes with you. They make life so much easier. When you're moving from place to place every other day, it means that you can literally just shove it all in your rucksack and it will be fine. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You will basically live in your flip-flop. You'll wear them every day and most nights as well. The only other footwear we would suggest bringing is a pair of good quality trainers because you will end up at some point hiking. Cotton clothing. Your jean shorts might look good but they're not going to keep you cool. All you really need is three to four items of every piece of clothing, so t-shirts, shorts and everything like that. Apart from underwear maybe, you might need a few more of those. When you're travelling, you will not be judged from wearing the same three t-shirts for two weeks in a row. It's just what everyone does, get used to it. The snorkel. We used our snorkels pretty much everywhere we went. It saved us a lot of money because we didn't need to rent them. If you're planning on doing a similar route to us and you're going to New Zealand or Southern Australia, you will need warm clothes. Night time, it gets very cold, especially if you're a girl. You will need hoodies, trackies, and stuff to keep warm at night. Also, when you're travelling, because the aircon and the buses can sometimes be very cold, so you will need a torch, especially if you get a camp fan like us, but also you will find yourself on an island at some point that doesn't have electricity at night time. Also, we took an external power source with us. Ours was called Power Seed and it saved us on so many occasions. Like Josh said, we were on an island, it had no electricity at night and we really needed to use our phone. You're going to want to prevent yourselves and your belongings getting wet. So I really recommend a light anorak, a maybe a waterproof cover for your main rucksack and a waterproof bag like this which will protect everything if you go on boat trips or if you're out when it potentially might rain. And lastly, good quality suntan lotion. Now, I never used Factor 50 before, but I used it all of Fiji, all of New Zealand, and pretty much all of Australia. So tips for booking your trip. Do not use STA travel to book your flights. They made a mistake when booking our flights. They didn't take responsibility, and we had to fork out £300 each in the middle of our trip just so that we could get home. This company can be great to use, but if anything goes wrong, then you're going to have to pay the price. So just bear that in mind when you do book anything with them. Check the small print, because not all flights will have the 12 month validity period that you may want when you go on these trips. We found out the hard way because they booked our flight, which had a 4 month validity period, even after we told them we wanted to be away for about 6 to 7 months. There are lots of other companies that you can book with, so please shop around and avoid STA at all costs. Also, travel agents will make you feel like 
you have to have everything booked up before you go just to be on the safe side. But that's because they want your money. It's so much cheaper when you book things when you get out there, so just think about it. It really pays to go with a good airline for the long haul flights. Uh, you get a much better service, much better food and a lot more comfort, especially if you're flying for 30 odd hours. We flew with Emirates on both of our long haul flights and we could not fault them, they were brilliant. When booking your all around the world flight ticket, you should get a flexi pass because it means that you can change your flights free of charge if any of your plans change. Finance and money saving. We use the Caxton FX Global Travel Card. Uh, this is a top up style card, it gave us free withdrawals and free card payments everywhere we went. It was absolutely brilliant, we could not fault it. Also take a credit card uh, because you may have to make large payments and also payments you're not overly happy with making and obviously every payment you make on a credit card will be insured. In certain countries, you will get charged a fee at every single cash machine. You can't avoid it no matter what card you have. If you're staying in the country for a month, then you could get a SIM card. In Southeast Asia, you can get them at 7-Eleven. They're ridiculously cheap and it could get you out of a sticky situation if you find yourself in the middle of nowhere. Before we go, here are some final tips. Do not turn things down that you think you may regret later on. Whilst you're travelling, make the most of it and be a yes person. Make the most of every single day. It's going to go so fast. And you're going to get homesick at some point, but just let that pass because it will. And then you'll be on to the next amazing part of your trip and you would have forgotten all about it. So if you haven't already, please check out our website, Instagram pages and the rest of our videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Bye! Bye, -bye.